Hey you, if at any point in this video you're like, wow, I really like Sarah's glasses, they're so stylish. Well, you can check out our sponsor in the description below, Warby Parker. Okay, I am comparing a M1 Ultra Mac Studio against my personal desktop PC. This is a Puget PC, so really it's a $6,000 setup versus a $6,000 setup. I might've gotten some of the numbers wrong, but you get it. What's up everyone, my name is Sarah Dietschy, Rhymes with Peachy. Welcome to another video. I might be the last person ever to get their Mac Studio, but hey, we're gonna put it to the test. Not just, you know, specs and some video rendering. This will be pretty video editor maker centric. I'm sorry, that is who I am, but also the actual setups because something I was surprised by is this studio display. I've been editing on LG ultra wides, which I just love so much. They're great, but I'm starting to realize, oh, Sarah, when your career is making videos, maybe you should get a screen that's a little bit more color accurate. So there, there's one of my insights right from the top. Don't get me wrong, I was one of those people from the get being like, ah, this display seems a little pricey for what we're getting. And so for this video, I was like, hey, I really wanna dive into this M1 Ultra Mac Studio. What if I just put it directly behind my normal setup. So we didn't exactly have just an extra desk laying around. So I go to Target, get one of those $40 foldable desks, unbox the Mac Studio, unbox the display. And I will have to say the Mac Studio unboxing experience is really awesome. I love the thick braided handle at the top, how it kind of just lifts outside of the box. The studio display unboxing wasn't as graceful, but hey, they perfectly fit on the junky table that I hope holds up everything. <laughs> now I remind you with the display, you can get it in three different configurations. A basic tilt, a height adjustable in tilt, and then a vase amount if you wanna put it on like an arm that I have on my LG display. Now the Mac Studio that we have is the M1 Ultra, the lower spec, so not the completely maxed out. I kinda of wanted to just test my waters. Hey, is the M1 Ultra really that much better? Two M1 Max chips fused together, Psh, mind blown. If you're not super familiar with the new Apple Silicon line, in most of Apple's computers, they got rid of Intel, and now you have the options between the M1, M1 Pro, M1 Max and now M1 Ultra in order of powerfulness. But now in this Mac Studio, we have comparable power to my crazy PC, right? In such a small chassis. And sometimes even more powerful than my PC, spoiler alert. And do all that without ever kicking the fans on. I literally, well, I mean, maybe the fans kicked on, but I, I haven't heard anything yet. I will say setting up the computer, I had a very classic Apple experience. Uh, remember the saying like Apple just works, Mac just works, iPhone, they just work. That comes with the context that you're using it within the Apple ecosystem, right? So I did not buy a mouse and keyboard, the Touch ID keyboard that comes with a Mac Studio because I was like, dude, I literally have like 10 different keyboards. I'm just gonna hook up my own. Yeah, that did not go very good. <laughs> so the Logitech Craft keyboard, it is like a built for Mac keyboard. I've used it with many Macs in the past and I even reset the entire keyboard and it just did not wanna connect. I try to plug that keyboard straight in with a USB, a lightning to USB, didn't work. I tried to plug another random keyboard in, straight USB. Uh, granted, this was like a Razer PC keyboard, but I was like, this should work. It actually restarted the computer, so I really didn't like that. So I had to steal John's official Apple keyboard from his iMac and that worked. So we finally got into the computer that way. Like, just, ah. So the actual studio display, I like it. 5K goes a long way. As someone who stares at ultra wides a lot for my PC setup, you know, resolution isn't, their best skill set. It's not like it's super pixel dense. So uh, this was actually really great. Of course, of course it would have been great if it was like 120 hertz, super smooth. I know people never wanna go back now that we have them on our pro iPhones and the pro iPads, it's fantastic. Um, but I will say like that is not a deal breaker for me. Like if I were to actually use this display in my everyday use, it would be attached to the Mac Studio, which means I wouldn't be gaming on it. I wouldn't really need that high frame rate. For creatives, I feel like that pixel density and having that extra resolution is a bigger win when you're editing really high res photos or 4K, 8K video. So I don't really care about that. And then of course, like why it's expensive? Well, you have that Apple premium tax, right? It's not the best value. It just isn't like the engineering is super overkill. 
and the webcam, like honestly, it could look better. I really like the look of my Logitech uh, stream cam actually better, which was interesting. I'm pretty sure Apple is going to release an update for their webcam uh, because people are like, hey, this could be better. So they're doing it. it, has that A13 Bionic chip in it, just super overkill again. But I will say the speakers, the speakers are so good. I am one of those crazy people who use internal monitor speakers. If you have your own speaker setup, you got your webcam, high frame rate is important to you. And while you're not a Mac user, for sure, find another display. With the state of screens right now, you kind of have to choose 4K, high refresh rate, or 5K, higher resolution, but 60 Hertz, lower refresh rate. Using the studio display for a while now has made me realize, oh, I need to ditch this one, seriously. like. I do video work for a living, Sarah. You, you need to be more color accurate. You and Resolve on this guy doesn't look at all what it looks like with the end product on someone's phone or someone's nicer display or TV. That's an expensive lesson to learn. I don't know what I'm gonna go with but I'll keep you updated. Having an SD card slot and two USB up in the front with the Mac Studio, amazing. All the ports in the back, a 10 gig ethernet, boom, 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 ports. Woo! Me personally, I really don't like center stage outside of an iPad. Like when I'm doing serious Zoom meetings, don't move the camera, you know? You know, it's way easier to turn off center stage on the iPad. And so um, that's really easy, but some apps need to catch up for Mac. Okay, so I kind of did that in reverse, my bad, talking about the setups, like my PC setup first, this Mac Studio setup first, but okay, resolve. Computers have caught up to a lot of the Kodaks that we're shooting on. I shoot with an A7S III, FX3, and an FX6. Um, and this Mac Studio slices through the video in resolve like butter. It does a great job. And so the days are behind us that we need to make proxies, but there's still one use case. If you're sending off footage to a remote editor, you don't want to send the full 150 gigs of your 4K footage because that's going to take forever downloading from the internet. Well, using proxies in that case, sending maybe 20 gigs of footage is way easier. And so in this example, I am exporting two clips. It's just from an ACAM with the FX6. It's MXF files, and this is about 47 gigs of 4K footage. And to my surprise, the M1 Ultra Mac Studio, uh, murdered it. And so it took that 4K footage, exported it to 1080 H.264 proxies in only seven minutes and 48 seconds. And the PC did that resolve in double the amount of time, 14 minutes and 49 seconds. And so yeah, as a resolve user on a PC, my ego was kind of hit. I was like, excuse me? What? <laughs> but then I did the same exact test in Adobe Premiere and they were only two seconds away from each other. So the M1 Ultra in eight minutes and 48 seconds and then the PC in eight minutes and 50 seconds. So they were neck and neck. So Resolve is just super optimized for Apple Silicon. And as you see, Premiere is not that far behind. Premiere has gotten really great. It was a rough start, but it has arrived. It was only a little bit behind. As I'm filming this today, Final Cut actually got a brand new update where it's now optimized for the M1 Ultra, which is very exciting. So I finally did what I have been wanting to do, but I've just been too lazy to do it. But I basically took one of our 4K video projects that you've seen on this channel with the A-cam as an FX6 and an overhead cam as an A7S III, so a good mix of Kodaks there. And I made sure the project was exactly the same in Resolve, in Premiere, and also Final Cut. We had to like rebuild the project from scratch in Final Cut, because the way it does the XML export from Resolve is it basically renders out all the individual clips, which we don't want. We want the actual raw FX6 and A7S clips. Um, so we did that over there and we're going to do a render test between all of the programs on the M1 Ultra and also the other Apple Silicon. After this word from our amazing sponsor, Warby Parker. You like the glasses I'm wearing? These are from Warby Parker. You know what also makes you cool besides $6,000 crazy computer setup? Cool frames. And that is where our sponsor comes in today. Shout out to Warby Parker for sponsoring this video. Guys, I'm such a fan of Warby Parker. Um, I have used them for years. I'm a glasses gal, okay? And they are committed to exceptional eye care, both online and in store. Eyeglasses, sunglasses, eye exams, and contacts. I got my contacts on a monthly delivery with them. It is so easy to set up, so easy to maintain. And I have five new pairs of glasses right here as a part of their home try on kit. You basically get 
five frames for five days for free to decide what frames you like. So let me know which glasses you like in the comments down below. I'm gonna send a few of these back, put my prescription in. I'm very excited. My cat is very excited too. And speaking of the home try on kit, guys, they make it so easy. You can go online and take their quiz. They ask you, hey, what is your style, face shape, etc.?" And they suggest glasses for you. It's just, it's fun. It's fun and it's easy. It ships for free. They include a prepaid return label. They make it so easy. You guys should just check out their website. Their selection is crazy, not just the eyeglasses, but also their sunglasses. They are super stylish and super affordable. A lot of their frames start at only $95. So if you like what you saw, you can check out my link in the description below. Uh, try out Warby Parker's home try on program where you can try five pairs of glasses at home for free. Again, warbyparker.com slash Sarah That is me. And I guess let's get back to, to this guy. Okay, the moment you've been waiting for, the same 4K 20 minute video with FX6 A7S three footage, titles, graphics, and film convert as a color grade all over the same video resolve final cut premiere let's do the test let's start with premiere on the mac studio we exported this video in seven minutes and 12 seconds on the puget pc nine minutes and 31 seconds so the mac studio beat my pc over two minutes in Premiere. In Resolve, the Mac Studio exported that same 20 minute 4K video in only five minutes and 46 seconds. I mean, so fast. And in seven minutes, 26 seconds on the PC. For these export settings, I was using the YouTube 4K preset in all of the programs. So moving on to Final Cut, this was a little shocking. The Mac Studio exported the video in 12 minutes and 43 seconds, but that was the better quality option. So I then switched it to the faster and code option and it exported it in four minutes and 50 seconds. So that is our fastest time yet. And I didn't tell that much discrepancy um, between the two exports. Both of them were still really large files in comparison to what I got from Resolve and DaVinci. And obviously I can't use Final Cut on my PC. It's only for Mac. But if you wanna compare the times of the M1 Ultra to my MacBook that has the M1 Pro, I was getting export times about double as long. So the M1 Ultra cut the export times in half compared to the M1 Pro. So the overall Mac Studio performance, when I was actually editing, being in the timeline in both Resolve and Premiere, it felt great. Resolve had less hiccups and sustained performance when playing through footage like quickly at two times, three times speed compared to Premiere, but Premiere felt really, really smooth. My PC occasionally still struggles with the super compressed A7S III HS422 10-bit footage. I know that's a mouthful, um, even to the point where I've just started shooting HS420 10-bit. You really can't tell the quality difference. This is also another place where the M1 Ultra shined. It didn't stutter once when I was playing back that 422 10-bit A7S 3 footage at full resolution in between all of the video editing programs. I'm super impressed with the Mac Studio with the M1 Ultra. Um, the fact that it does it in such a small little chassis, right? Uh, I think a lot of the drama is around the SSD, like wah. Okay, I guess you can cancel me over this, but it's always like weird to see people freak out that Apple isn't the company that makes things that are customizable, that you can like switch components out and do your own things to it. I'm just like, that's never been Apple. I mean, you can make the decision if you don't like that. Cause for, for me, for my own desktop, I'm like, yeah, I'm actually not interested in that. That's why I have this awesome Puget PC where if I want to change out the SSD, if it gets corrupted, or if I just want more space, if I want to add extra hard drives beyond my SSDs, I can do it. It's super modular. It's a PC. I can get game on this, right? I love the way Windows handles audio with recording or streaming. It's just super easy. There are a lot of things and a lot of reasons why I go with a PC as my main desktop and I'm, I'm not switching. So that's a part of my decision process, right? Um, and Apple has never been the one that you can just like crank open the inside and swap out all the parts. I totally get the criticism in terms of repairability though. Um, you know, if you can't go in there and at least repair it, third party repair people don't have a shot at that, you're basically left with just the Apple Genius Bar who can fix it for a very steep price tag. I totally get that. But for the people who are just like, ah, I can't put my own like four terabyte SSD in here, grr, I'm like, has it ever been Apple? I don't know. Cancel me. It's fine. I can take it. You know, I've been enjoying my 14 inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro 
it's been great. But in terms of my desktop setup where I edit all my videos, I'm just, I'm so comfy and the Puget PC has not failed me yet. It's been super consistent. And even though Resolve is actually quicker on the Mac Studio, that's something where now, hey, I will keep my eyes open for future updates of this. I, I might be interested in the future, but right now out of comfort, I'm good. Out of reliability, I'm good. Some of the convenience of just being on a Mac desktop, again, were nice. Like I use basically an app called Things that is only in the Apple ecosystem, which is really annoying. Some little productivity things like that is, is really nice, but you know, AirDrop I'm fine with because I got my server set up. I have my G drive locations and transferring files from computer to a phone and vice versa is just easy by now. I have a lot of workarounds for not being in that ecosystem when it comes to my desktop. Using iMessage on here, I guess was, was pretty great. You know, but that's something again, I can live without. It's actually easier to focus on my computer when I don't have those notifications. So all in all, I think this is going to be a great option for the creative types that just want things to, here, I'm saying it again, that just want things to work. Again, take that loosely, but in terms of like a turnkey setup, it's actually super portable. You don't have to worry about getting a, you know, graphics card for over $2,000 and building your own computer and all that stuff. It has ports, it's super fast, it's super quiet, and it's great now that you have an Apple display option that isn't the Pro XDR, which is so expensive. This still is pretty darn expensive, so you have to make that decision for yourself if it's worth it. I definitely recommend either going with the vase amount where you can control the tilt, if you can do horizontal and vertical. You can only do it with a vase amount with your own arm. Um, if you don't want to go with that, I highly suggest the more expensive version, unfortunately, where you can control the height and tilt. Well, hey guys, let me know if you like this video. And I have a new video coming out where I'm going to trick out a desk setup with this setup. Yeah, that's right. It won't be on a cheap $40 desk. We're gonna make it super sick. So make sure you're subscribed for that. It'll be out next week. If you wanna watch another video, hey, watch some of my MacBook videos. I will link that in the description below as well. Like, sub, and stay peachy. Okay, bye.